In this video, we're going to look at the um, components of the epidermis and the dermis. So we're going to take a good look at um, how the skin is built. And so let's get started on that. So there are two types of skin in the body. There are There is thick skin and thin skin. Um, <clears throat> Thick skin is found in only two locations on the body. It's the in the palms of the hands and at the soles of the feet. That's where the skin is thickest. And um, it has five very distinct cell layers. And we're going to look at the names of those cell layers in just a second. Um, some other characteristics, though, of, of, of thick skin is that it's hairless. So when you look at your hands and your, palm, your you know, the palms of your hands, no hairs there. And same on the soles of your feet. But there are uh, many, many sweat glands. So we have a large accumulation of sweat glands. So this is why people get sweaty palms or sweaty feet. Um, thick skin can, um, the, the epidermal layers of thick skin are about half a millimeter thick. So there at the thick skin we see um, fairly thick epidermal layer. In thin skin, we only see four of those distinct cell layers. And um, the, the one that is missing, so in thin skin, if you look at the names of the cell layers, right here, you'll notice here on the names of the cell layers, the one that is missing in thin skin is the stratum lucidum. It has all the other four layers, though. We find abundant hair and oil and sweat glands in thin skin, and um, it is the epidermal layers are very thin here, um, eight hundredths of a millimeter thick. Okay, so let's take a look and see what those layers are called, and then we're going to break it down looking at layer by layer. So from the bottom upward, we have at the base the stratum basale, that's the deepest layer, and it's the one that is attached to the basement membrane. So remember, between the epidermis and the dermis, there's this basement membrane of, made of, of, um, of collagenous fibers and elastic fibers that support the stratum basale. And you say basale, you say all, the, all of the letters, we're, we're talking in Latin now, and so um, basale is how you'd say that last word. Stratum means layer. Um, so, you know, we talked about stratified. It's the same root word as stratified. Um, <clears throat> so stratum basale is the deepest. Stratum spinosum is the next layer up. And uh, relatively uh, large number of cells, cell layers there in the stratum spinosum. Stratum granulosum is the next layer up. Stratum lucidum, that's the most superficial layer. Um, if I'm sorry, that's fat, that's the layer that's found in, in thick skin only. And then stratum corneum is the most superficial layer. Notice that it's not stratum lucidum that gives thick skin its very thick epidermal layer. It's the stratum corneum that's the thickest there. But stratum lucidum is only found in thick skin. Okay, so we'll start by looking at the stratum basale. This is a single layer of either cuboidal or columnar cells, primarily cuboidal cells. Um, even though the epidermis is a stratified squamous epithelium, down at the basal layers where the, the cells are alive and doing a lot of division, um, it, it is, they are cuboidal there. And they have a, a rich supply of nutrients and oxygen because the, of the blood that is available, that blood supply that's down in the dermal layer. And they, so they get their, their um, nutrients and their oxygen diffusing across directly from the connective tissue below. And they're attached to the basement membrane by what's called a, a hemidesmosome. So it's like a half desmosome is what a hemidesmosome is. These uh, grow and divide via a process called mitosis. That's just regular old cell division. We looked at mitosis back when we talked about the cells. And um, depending on how rapidly the skin is growing, 
it, they may divide as frequently as, as once a day. So, especially in young people, we see lots and lots of very rapid cell division down here at the stratum basale. The cells that, you know, after division, the cell that attaches to the membrane uh, remains a stem cell, but the other one becomes a fully differentiated cell that will then migrate toward the apical surface. And it does this as new cells are being produced underneath it. So here is a stratum basale cell. It grows and then divides. So now we have two cells. Now if we were to look at that cell a little a day later, we would have seen that it is that the stratum basale cell has grown again and is preparing to divide and that the cell we made the previous day has been pushed upward. And so it goes until eventually up at the upper layers of the skin, the squamous cells that are up there will, be, will flake away and be lost from the skin surface. So down here at the bottom, we're replacing all the cells that are lost up at the top most layer. So as the cells are pushed upward from the stratum basale, they become stratum spinosum cells. And there are lots of layers in the stratum spinosum. But what's happening there is that the cells are beginning to synthesize and store the keratin that they can make. And the more that they more keratin they produce, the flatter the cell the cell will become. And um, we keep adding more and more desmosomes to connect the cell membranes together as the cells move upward and begin to age. Um, so this is, a, this is a zone of very rapid um, keratin production and, um, and lots of desmosomes are being made to connect the cells together there at the stratum spinosum. Once the cells reach the layer uh, called the stratum granulosum, they, those layers, about three to five cell layers thick, this is where the cells begin to lose their organelles and start to die. They're called granulosum because there's lots and lots of these keratin granules found inside of the cell. And, um, and so between all of this keratin that they produce kind of crowding out the rest of the organelles and the fact that they are so far now from their blood supply, from the oxygen and nutrients that are being delivered down there at the in the dermis, they've gotten so far from all that blood supply that they just begin to die. So there's little room left in the cells, and they're starting to to shuffle off this mortal coil. Now, if it is thick skin, the cells go through um, a, a very characteristic look that um, is referred to as stratum lucidum. They become kind of you know, they, they have almost the appearance of being translucent. Um, that's what lucid means, is clear. And uh, it's just a few cell layers thick. And, you know, it, it's hard to look at these stained slides and really get a sense of what's going on because they've been stained. And so the stain affects how we can see through them. But um, if we could see it unstained, then it would, it would look a lot different. And you wouldn't see these big color differences and that great darkness there at, at the stratum granulosum right before it becomes the stratum lucidum. So, so don't be fooled by the fact that these are stained cells. They just are differentially stained to be able to see different characteristics. Dead cells above, that's the pink ones. Living cells below, those are the, the um, stratum spinosum and stratum granulosum cells that are still alive. And then the most superficial layer is the stratum corneum, and this is where um, where uh, the the layers are generally the thickest. So 20 to 30 layers of, th of of cells here. The cells are fully keratinized; they're dead. The layer is especially thick if it's thick skin. Lots and lots of stratum corneum, um, and this is where the cells are being lost up there at the apical surface. You can see that the cells are starting to flake away from the skin surface. And that apical surface is tough and dry and really waterproof. The, pre, the, the root word corn means horn, so this is, this is like a really tough 
almost horn-like layer is is what it's what that name is suggesting to us. So we uh, balance the cell loss up there at the apical surface with cell production down at the stratum basale. So that's the good news. Um, and it's amazing, we lose something on the order of 40 pounds of skin cells each year, which is just crazy for me to think of. Um, so it takes about two weeks for a cell that's produced down there at the stratum basale to make it to the stratum corneum, the lowest levels of the stratum corneum, and then another two weeks of a spin being pushed upward through the stratus cor stratum corneum to get to the apical surface. And if we we really um, stress the skin there at the at the surface, um, rubbing it inside a shoe or um, doing a lot of work with our hands, then uh, where the skin is rubbed and pressed repeatedly, stratum basale cells will go into overdrive, really producing lots of cells. And that will create an extra thick spot um, that's known as a callus or corn. So corneum, corn, here we are again. A corn is like a little horn, a little bump of, of uh, extra skin, um, extra stratum corneum that's produced in one area. Same with the callus. Okay, so we've talked about the epidermal layers. Now let's talk about the dermis, those dermal layers. The dermis is deep to the epidermis, and it binds the epidermis to those underlying tissues. And again, as I was saying, the, it's the dermal tissues that are the leather that we take from animal hides. It's a super strong but very flexible layer, just like leather is very strong but, but flexible. And um, it's largely composed of a dense, irregular connective tissue. It's built of lots of collagenous and elastic fibers that are in, um, in a real gel-like ground substance. And, and the cells that we see kind of working in and around all of the, um, all of the, the fibers there in this dermal layer are, are all the cells that are typical to finding, to being found in connective tissue proper. So um, we're talking about fibroblasts, but also mast cells and, um, and, and phagocyte cells. So lots, you know, all the cells that we talked about with connective tissue proper, especially those fibroblasts are found here in the dermis. Now, depending on where we are in the body, um, it can, there's, it's variable thickness, but there are two, um, there are two layers that we associate with the um, dermis. There's the pap papillary layer, which is composed of areolar tissue. So here you can see the papillary layer directly underneath. So that's areolar tissue. And then deep to the papillary layer of the dermis is the reticular layer or the reticular dermis. So this is that area down below where there's lots and lots of those collagenous fibers and elastic fibers both. And then below that would be where the subcutaneous layers are found. Now, the boundary between the dermis and the epidermis is really uneven. So we have regions where like domes of the dermis project upward into the epidermis. Those domes are referred to as the as the dermal papillae. <laughs> Unfortunately I just wrote right through the name there, but you can see it there. Those are the dermal papillae. And this is an this these dermal papillae are there and the value of them is that they increase the surface area between the non-vascular epidermis and the vascularized epidermis. So we get, well, what do you think? Why would that be important? I'll let you think about that for a second. You can even pause your video. Okay, if you're back with me then. Um, the reason that it's important, hopefully that you thought of, is that we need more surface area to allow greater exchange of oxygen and of nutrients between the dermis and the epidermis. And we can even see the dermal papillae at the skin surface. If we look at our fingerprints, those are the, the manifestation at the epidermis 
of the dermal papillae beneath. So these dermal papillae are extra big there. So at the at like our fingerprints, we would see a corresponding dome up at the epidermal surface. We don't see it in this slide, but but that would be the the situation if we were looking at a cross section through our fingerprints. So what are some other dermal tissues that we find? There may be um, that there are smooth. There are certainly smooth muscle cells. Oh, here's a great. Yeah, this is great. You can see the dermal papillae in this slide very well. Um, so smooth muscle cells are also found in the dermis. Um, lots and lots of blood and lymphatic ves vessels are found here. And then we have lots of sensory receptors. Um, the Pacinian corpuscles in here, we're looking at some Pacinian corpuscles sliced. They look almost like the spiral of tissue. They are deep in the dermis and they can detect heavy pressure. The Meisner's corpuscles, they are more superficial and this is a Meisner's corpuscle here, lighter staining area. That is um, used to detect light touch. So if you just brush your fingers across your skin, your Meisner's corpuscles are going to be responding to that. And then we also just see free nerve endings where, where uh, little nerve extensions are just out there in the dermal tissues and they're used to detect heat and cold and pain. And we're going to talk in the next lecture about the accessory structures, but we'll notice that most of the accessory structures of the skin have their origins down deep in the dermal layers as well. So there we are, the epidermis and dermis described for you. Any questions? You know how to reach me. Email, office hours. You can give me a phone call, but it will probably be Monday. You know, it, will be, it wouldn't be until um, I'm back on campus that I would get there. So study well. Talk to you soon.